Hello and welcome back. My name is Randy Scamhorn and this is the Chairman's Brief. Thank you for joining me again as we briefly talk about the issues which matter to you. As we mentioned in the first episode, people throughout Cobb frequently stop me when I'm at the grocery store out to eat with my wife or sometimes by email with questions about school. While the superintendent and his staff run the district, the Cobb School Board is seven individual members who together as one board should speak with one voice as we represent our county. As board chair today, I'm looking forward to speaking for the board to answer some of your questions and to talk a little bit about Cobb Teaching and Learning System, or as we know it, CTLS. We've received a series of, quest of questions about how the district's procurement process works, particularly with technology or health and safety solutions. Like almost anything with a large employer, understanding the process involved is complex and time consuming. As one of the largest employers in the state and the largest in the county, Cobb Schools is no different. Reading rumors and uninformed commentary on social media may be entertaining. It does not help you understand how procurement actually works. And in Cobb, the procurement process is led by a large number of people who have made their life's work to make sure the taxpayer's dollar is spent legally and wisely. Our procurement department has received the highest award for excellence in procurement practice. It's called the Achievement of Excellence in Procurement for many straight years. The layers of processes and safeguards have been recognized by industry leaders as some of the best in the field. I want to thank each of the hardworking staff members who protect the taxpayer's dollar every single day. The checks and balances we have implemented over the last seven years are not influenced and cannot be influenced by any superintendent or board member. <coughs> Excuse me. Accusations of mischief are irresponsible or worse as part of an ongoing smear campaign in an attempt to put pressure on the board or superintendent. We also received a series of questions about how the district works, how the board works, and who speaks for the board. In the simplest terms possible, the district is run by the superintendent and his staff. Superintendent Ragsdale continues to operate one of the largest school districts in the country and is navigating us through the COVID-19 pandemic as one of the longest tenured superintendents of a large metropolitan system in the state and in the country. The board's job is to create policy and the district operates within those district policies. The board represents over 800,000 citizens in Cobb County and should make sure community issues are brought to the attention of the district who then decide if and how those issues can be resolved. Every board member has a voice as agenda items are suggested for the board meetings by individual board members, which are then approved by the board as a whole. We represent you, all community members in Cobb County, not one corner or another. I am like every other board member in that I am one of seven and as board chair have the unique privilege of representing the board as a whole. The community should hear one board voice, not seven, as we govern as one body. We've also received questions from a number of you about board members wearing masks and social distancing during board meetings. Social media, local TV, and national outlets have shown particular interest in this topic. Public health guidance can be confusing, particularly when different federal, state, and local agencies <coughs> guidance or analysis is a bit different. As I mentioned last week, and you have heard often from the district communication channels, Superintendent Ragsdale has been very clear. 
we will stay in line with the local public health guidance and guidelines. You may not like what local public health guidance says, or you may think you have a better understanding of the science, but for our district, our superintendent has led us to follow what public health experts here in Cobb County recommend. Our mask protocol, which says masks are required when social distancing is not possible, I repeat again, is not possible, was created in partnership with our local public health experts. You will find similar guidance on the Cobb and Douglas Public Health website, which states Cobb and Douglas Public Health also recommends wearing face coverings in the public where social distancing may be difficult to maintain. During our board meetings, and as is obvious to anyone who watches it, our boardroom is set up so social distancing is possible. We are strictly following the guidance and every seat in the room is separated by at least six feet. Again, you may not like or agree with the guidance. You may have your own opinion. You may want school to be entirely remote. In Cobb, we will continue to follow what the local experts who understand COVID-19 recommend. It is also important to understand the purpose of public comment as outlined in board policy and best practices which protect the rights of public commenters to provide the public with an uninterrupted time to speak and to not influence their comment, board members do not interrupt, respond to, or engage with public commenters. There is a time and place for public displays of support, empathy, agreement with, or support for an opinion, a cause, or a person. To protect every citizen's First Amendment right to speak, that time and place is not during public comment. We will continue to answer frequently asked questions submitted by you, so keep those questions coming, and we will get to as many as we can each week. Now, especially since COVID-19 began, if you are a student or have a child in Cobb, you have probably heard of or used the Cobb Teaching and Learning System, which we call CTLS. The very first question we often receive about CTLS, a really good one, what is CTLS? CTLS was created by Superintendent Ragsdale over the last 10 years as a result of his vision which is shared by the board that the traditional classroom has been changing as student needs change. CTLS combines digital tools that are usually separate and disconnected from each other. These te the technical term for that connection is integration. CTLS puts tools for students, teachers, and parents all in one place. CTLS gives resources to teachers, high quality content to students, and gives parents access to know more about their students. When we can access what a student knows by combining or integrating tools, what we know and what we can do for our students gets better. There is a lot more detail about CTLS and the district has created a website, www cobctls.com, which has, <clears throat> which has much more detail, including videos, frequently asked questions, technical support, and resources so that you can better understand and use CTLS. Another question about CTLS, which we've heard often, is why aren't we using a third party, out of the box, online learning system? This is also the question those who disagree with the district, superintendent, or board have been using to throw dirt at the superintendent recently. It's also a fairly simple answer if you think about it for a moment. With any piece of out-of-the-box technology, we can only do what the tool allows. That may be okay when we're talking about your phone or home security system, but in Cobb, our superintendent isn't okay with only providing students, parents, and staff with what a tech company says they should have. 
CTLS has been built based on input from educators, not from the tech companies. A final question we often hear about CTLS is, how is it being used now and how will it be used for in the future? The answer to that question will continue to be up to the superintendent and his staff, but I know it will be based on the needs of students. As the needs of students have changed during COVID-19, a lot of time and effort have gone into fast tracking development that otherwise would not have been happened. It is currently being used by students who are learning remotely and it is being used by students in face-to-face -face classrooms. I continue to be impressed by the adaptability of our teachers and staff as we change, adapt, and develop how our teachers teach based on the needs of students. While staff continues to navigate COVID-19, I do know CTLS will be the centerpiece of how teaching and learning happens in Cobb County as a tool which supports students' learning, engages parents, and empowers teachers. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I hope that this has been useful in helping you understand a little bit more about CTLS and thank you for the chance to answer some of your questions. Over the coming weeks and months, I hope to answer more of your questions and talk with district leaders, staff, and maybe even the superintendent. Thank you for supporting the Cobb County School District. It is because of our wonderful community that this county is truly the best place in the world to teach, lead, and learn. Thank you and have a nice day.